All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this morning's coverage of Mr. Cat here. We're going to have a best of three playoff series between Faceless and Clutch Gamers. I'm Android, being joined by the lovely Trent Pax. How you doing, man? I'm in a little bit of shock right now. I'm not even sure what to think. What, Faceless Gamer you know, Spirit just... or First Pick Clock? That's a first pick clock. That, that is a first pick I, clock here and now in this meta. I just, I come into my morning Dota. I'm expecting Clutch Gamers to get their Boombox Crystal Maiden, which they play almost every single game now. Where, like, an absolutely absurd amount of games. This guy totally kills it on, you know, and I see that first pick. And oh, they, they certainly love having the 2-3 pick on Clutch Gamers. They always um, want to opt in that direction. But there's there's the answer. And that's what I was going to start getting around to, was the fact that they do play a lot of Shadow Fiend. And if there's ever a time you want to open with Clockwork, it has Souls. to be support. And, yeah, you want to do your cog shenanigans with these um, Necromastery stacks. So, certainly interesting. Uh, we'll see. Maybe it'll still end up being an offlaner, but uh, the option for support is 100% open here for them. And this is kind of cool. It's a very different look. It's not something they've done uh, recently at all. And, you know, they're going up against one of the hardest opponents, if not the hardest opponent in this entire tournament. So, uh, that's pretty crazy. I got to say... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's uh, definitely some boldness to that. I mean, how have Clutch been looking? Clearly, they made it to the playoffs. They're against Faceless. They've got a good shot at this. Or Clutch, rather, sorry. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, this will be the first time we also get to see a Timber Saw from Faceless. Gets banned out every single time. People have been uh, taking that out in the first phase. A lot of teams banning, like Nyx and uh, Timber Saw, I know was a very common theme, but uh, throughout all of Mr. Cat, it's been usually like the Magnus and the Timber Saw being taken out against them. So I'm um, looking forward. I don't think I've gotten to see the Timber Saw. I think I've seen it like once from them, uh, perhaps. So just looking forward to watch some expertise on that hero. Of course, we do naturally assume that it'll be handed over to Ice Ice Ice, but. They could go for some other shenanigans if they want. Most likely scenario will be some sort of an aggro play. Uh, maybe not with an Earth Spirit, but it's still there. If CG pick a very weak safe lane, uh, they could come down to that bottom lane with a... Uh, well, I was thinking of Venge for themselves, actually, but something along those lines. Well, she's banned, Trent. Gone. <laughs> they took care of her. I'm sorry. I'm, I've got my, like, I'm up at 3 a.m. mix of extreme sarcasm and just utter hate for my life, so... Excellent. It's really That's great. Probably the I'm best way to live, honestly. Really happy to be casting Mr. Cat right now. Uh, no, but seriously, we're going to see some great Dota. Again, best of three series. Is, this is elimination, right? No, this no. is. Okay. These are our champions. These are our winner bracket. The other side I mean. of the bracket. I know right. you love blood, but I'm sorry. that'll be the second series. We were doing elimination then, then yesterday. dreams get crushed. I got bloodthirsty. Yes. I saw yeah, teams no. go home. I just got so happy. Yeah, it's understandable. But uh, no, these guys, they have another chance, perhaps. Uh, again, accentuating these rather newfound opening for CG, but I'm loving it. It's Radiant side. And, uh, man, second pick actually rules so hard. Well, maybe it's, a, I don't know. The problem with second pick is that you get counterpicked pretty hard, I think, during this phase. But then, of course, it's only like this one pick that's counter that gets countered, though, super hard, I guess. Um, no, this one gets countered. And then your next one, yeah, I guess your next two picks do get fully countered, so. That's pretty sick for Clutch Gamers, but that final pick, you know. I mean, that's why every team prefers the second pick. Yeah, it's, I think it's in a it's, decent spot right now. Yeah, I mean, the, the balance of it out, you know, second pick, super strong, but you could also choose Radiant or Dire, and Radiant have, like, what, a 98% win rate or something stupid Must right now? Must be. Yeah. Must be like Feels that, like yeah. it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, a little salty uh, no, from all my pubs. When I'm on yeah, Radiant, no, easy game. It seems like I have a better team as well, but... That's probably just crystal confirmation maiden. bias. Anyway, there's the Crystal Maiden that we're so used to seeing on Faceless. No, we're used to seeing that on Clutch. It's, hey, she's in the game. It's okay, Faceless pick it too, but you're right. Definitely the, the CG hero. I mean, it's Boombox God. This is this is definitely a half deny pick, no question. I'm just so used to seeing it on Clutch Gamer's side. I don't know if I can do this. Interesting when you had um, like Rubik still left in the pool. Up against Clockwork, a classic. Crystal Mane, she's still, like, okay in lane against Clockwork, but it's not as brutal as some of the other um, Crystal Maiden matchups where she can just, like, uh, annoy or Darkseer quite a bit and whatnot, so. The wombo combo here. Yeah, there's the team fight. Is Clutch going to stick with the all-red strat? I think that's that's an important thing to, to point get out here. Get a Doom, you know, really, really get us going here. 
Yeah, but in other words, Faceless, they got two really nice supports that can roam very early Crystal Maiden. She'll chill in your lane. She'll set you up for kills with early Frostbites. I, I don't know what it is, but Frostbite feels so OP right now. I can't tell you how many games I've watched where there's a Crystal Maiden. All she has to do is roam at level two and get like 45 kills. Yeah, no, she's uh, she's very strong. I mean, Roots got buffed. CM oh, got buffed. So it's great. Good. Uh, all this early team fighting. It's very nice when your team is the one that has more mana. And uh, you can just farm more efficiently across the map. You want heroes that can abuse that. Timbersaw, she's the baby Bloodstone, you know. <laughs> help out his lane quite a bit. That's a very good way to put it. Ember Spirit picked up. So a little high risk, high reward play right there. Faceless, very confident they're going to get off to a good start. I mean... 100% this is going to be the mid-ember, right? We're not going to see some safe lane nonsense. Yeah, unless, I mean, that would take CG doing something really weird. Uh, if they picked, like, an OD here <laughs> and sent a safe lane shadow feed, then we'd probably see a safe lane ember. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it'll just be, should be mid-ember versus mid-SF. And uh, we had that matchup yesterday, which was, man, I mean, obviously the SF, he gets a little bit of help early on, and then suddenly your Ember Spirit is way down, but there were just rotation after rotation after rotation, and we had our Shadow Fiend die, I think, five times uh, that game, and it was uh, brutal. I remember. Yeah, just that was painful. Getting pooped on. Yeah, so you got to make sure that they have some backup there for the SF, and, well, currently, if this ends up being a support clockwork, they also don't have the best position for it to actually harass early on, like... He's okay, but he doesn't have the staying power of someone like Ogre or even Undying. He only has so much mana to work with. Well, Wraith King keeps the trend going. He's got that little red jewel in his hat. So Croissant on his beard. That I have never noticed that, and I'm never going to be able to unsee that. I absolutely hate you right now. I know. It's actually such a croissant. It's, it's 100% croissant. Yeah, you can't ignore it once you see it. Oh, God. <laughs> He's that makes me hungry. Pastries on his chin. Anyway, Clutch Gamers going in for their last pick here. I'm very much assuming we're gonna see nothing too crazy, nothing unbelievably funky. I think they're they're just kind of saying what they got, throwing the cards out, letting everyone see what their hand is, and we'll see who they're gonna pick up here. Last pick. I think a silencer would actually be pretty cool if they wanted to go for an off lane clock Ooh. instead of committing him to a support role. Um, in terms of offlaners that are left, assuming, you know, if you're doing this support clock, they definitely need more lockdown. Legion is probably the highest. Yeah, she's probably the most likely, I guess. Um, I do like the OD ban. I think that was smart. Just because then we could have had the safe lane Ember if they really wanted to, like, counterpick this SF and uh, get someone more destructive in the mid lane for Faceless. So don't ever let that hero chill out. Oh, we still have the Meepo. Is this a good Meepo? Is this, nah. is this the first game in Mr. Cat that I've seen where there's no Meepo ban? I, I don't know. Like that's he just a like, respect thing in the region. Yeah, like when we started, it was all these, like every game, Tinker and Meepo uh, were banned out, right? It was like uh, those two heroes, especially Meepo, but uh, Tinker always getting banned like the second phase or the final pick. And now this game, neither of them are here. Things have definitely changed since the beginning of this tournament, though. Uh, so Meepo cool. no longer really a, a first ban anymore, but... Basis, of course, said that and the lovely string of Red. Meepo plays. And all right, that's an that's an anti. All right, let's not get Meepo hero. <laughs> that's that's like a all right, come at me, bro, kind of hero. Like but... we already have Warlock, <laughs> now we have Axe. <laughs> Their team fights are gonna be off the chain if they can actually set them up. But Faceless are so mobile. You're gonna have Earth Spirit just roll in whichever direction he pleases on the map. Ember Spirit bouncing around. You know, hell, let's see Let's see. Crystal Maiden get a blink pretty early, too. I mean, this is going to be such a hard team to get on top of. How do you hold Faceless in one small group to be able to drop the rock or go for the call? Yeah, this is a little bit of pressure on the axe, I would say, um, to find those tougher calls. But Rappy, a.k.a. Hannah, I, I got some faith. He's a good player. You got the faith? Yeah. So he's. Uh, they need to stack that control. Pretty heftily, right? I mean, a single Berserker's Call, pretty easy to follow up with the Wraith Fire Blast. Clockwork will be there, too. It'll be all right. Uh, faceless. So our Ember, now that we see this Clockwork, you can probably safely, or, um, solo mid. Should be fine. Uh, not too much concern, I would say, at this point. Uh, if we send him there, now we're looking at a Assumed Black Hero. Can we aggro? We'd be aggroing into a Wraith King and a Warlock. That's not bad, considering Axe isn't going to make any early rotations down. 
So they could like jug or something. They just wanted to. Definitely. They a could safe lane legion themselves. Yeah. Actually, that sounds like it sounds doable. It just it makes me want to gag. And there's anti mage. All right. All right. We're not uh, we're not aggroing. No magic. <laughs> we're chilling. It's not happening. All right. So this is going to be a pretty interesting matchup. Lots of strength heroes on the board, but I am I am very excited to see how clutch gamers are going to execute their team fights because it looks. I mean, everyone on faceless aside from CM has some sort of built-in escape. They've got you know either timber chaining away or blinking or rolling or whatnot. I I don't know how the fights are going to look, and I am super excited. I think a faceless play this right, it could be pretty easy for them. But of course, clutch if they get strong lanes, they have the power to scale up incredibly quickly. Axe is really hard to walk against if you've got no levels. <laughs> so this is uh and like how many times have you guys picked Wraith King in your pubs because you like watch the Wraith King clip or you just times. think about Wraith King <laughs> and how badass he is, and you're like, yeah, I love that hero. He's so fun. It is one button god. And then the other guy, every game, they pick Andy Mage. Every. Just hub where's game. your man? You want to play Rage King. It's, it's not there. So, you're going to have to watch that. Come you know, on, get map. some mangoes. Got to get your wand, time that right. All right, let's uh, switch the overlay here. Oh, I did it. I'm a good caster. There we go. Nice. I don't like the load in for spectator. You don't get that fancy, like, anime battle screen. You just kind of go to the corner of the map, and your map appears very slowly. I know, it only works for um, all pick, because we kept getting it during elimination mode, which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> was like I was like, this is ever. so cool. Like, the battle screen, you can see the, sh the showdowns. Who do you think looks the most badass in the battle mode thing? The need charcoal. The hell are they doing with charcoal right now? <laughs> <laughs> Must be cold. That's a, that's a poop emoji right there. Alright, so any predictions for this game? Anything you think we're gonna see that's out of the out of the norm, out of the usual? Uh I don't know, I guess we have hundred percent confirmed it is, yeah, Fly Solo gonna be playing Bawkwork, just to make sure, I suppose, but so uh I loved his Elder Titan plays and everything too on that four and that roaming, so looking forward to this one. But uh his pressure will definitely be something to watch. How much he helps Armel mids. I mean we've seen Armel one of the uh unknown players to start this tournament at least for me not someone who i've seen in a long time and uh certainly impressed by what he's put up so far on his ember spirit and shadow fiend play so the, the question will be just how much help does he get once he like at the very beginning for a soft get his stacks up and then when those rotations do start coming in like the pressure from xy into that mid lane gonna be difficult i think for cg to balance just how much they need to help mid with this clockwork Dude, Shadowfeet looks pretty gnarly in cinematic mode. He's got all his, like, shit oozing everywhere. Alright, so looks like we're gonna have uh, a pretty typical setup. Here's the cogs thing that we talk about. Uh, so if you don't really get what's going on, he's got his Necromastery first, so he picks up souls, and apparently cogs are living things. So if you deny cogs in the fountain, you get some souls to start out with. So a little bit more power, bringing it to the lane. Cost clockwork a little mana, but he'll sacrifice it. I love how much better teams have gotten at it. They oh. used to be so bad. I used to watch them like <laughs> struggle down the mid lane, and I don't think, I think that was before you figured out you do it in the fountain. So they would like do it in in mid, and then Clockwork would just start with no mana, and that's before Shrine. So he would just have a really tough time. Yeah, and then they figured out this whole strat where like you do it in the fountain for a bit, then you walk out, you buy one Clarity uh, every time on Clockwork, and then you just keep doing it every time Cogs off oh. cooldown as you walk towards the rune. Pretty great. I'm There's a certainly a, a meta that's evolved. Fly solo, he's walking up the hill, and there we go. He goes in with the cogs. There's gonna be that warlock heal put on him like right away. No chances taken, and they're gonna herd all of Faceless back to their side of the map. Really quick reaction there. If my nuts had or rather, yeah, just nuts had gotten the uh, the frostbite. Would have been a very different initiation. Oh Lord, we wind up nine stacks. Eh, we got half his max. It's not too bad. All right, we're gonna see if Hannah can fix the issue. Maybe some more charcoal is gonna help. I'm not not a PC expert though. <laughs> I often just shove charcoal right into mine. Dude, just you just open put up it the back, in the disk drive, it like squish it down so it's like USB size. Just pack it in there. It's full of RAM, dude. Yeah, it makes it go faster. <laughs> well, yeah, that's another good idea. They should just download more RAM. I, I think that's what we're doing right now. Just just getting that RAM good. downloaded. Well. 
Till then, I mean, I just like looking, looking at forward Shadow to a black Fiend and cinematic. And... It is, it is art. Oh yeah, he he's got the like Diablo shoulders. I don't know. There's that whole set that makes him look so much like Diablo. It's awesome. He is Diablo, dude. It makes me just want to like play Shadow Fiend. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say play Diablo because I could get down on that. All right, so I'm really impressed that Fly Solo was able to just to walk up to the top of that cliff where there was four heroes waiting for him and feel completely unfazed, just immediate cogs. The Warlock went in with the heal, and now Fly Solo is just walking at four heroes. I mean, why aren't Faceless engaging right here? They've got that level one Frostbite from the Crystal Maiden, which is so strong. They can follow that up with the little bit of damage they got from the Ember. Are they just scared of ultimate retaliation by Clutch or, or what? Because yeah, Fly Solo just... seems easy. They don't know where the rest of them are. I mean, your AM has mana break. It's not really worth getting into anything. If there's an axe here and he just calls to your heroes, things could get a little bit nasty. So it's probably just not worth it for them in the end. We gotta go. We gotta look at everyone's uh, cinematic. Everyone's favorite. Very nice. Oh, dude, we got anime mage. I love this hair. I don't own it, but I want to. Oh, that is pretty nice. I could I could see a spirit bomb powering up that guy. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, so everyone else just going back to their respective sides of the map. No one getting too sneaky here, as the horn is going to sound. So this would just be Black grabbing up this little top rune here. And everyone gets off to the start they were looking for. Never refuse gold. Wow, I was wondering where that last one was, but it's just <laughs> jabs. Not quite there yet, so. Oh, he's he's working on it. He had to to walk himself all the way up here. All right, well, fly is uh, shrining and going top straight up. So no help mid for our SF, of course. You know, yeah, the whole idea of the clock was being that you don't really need that help, I suppose. So, uh, we'll see just how much pressure X Y in turn will be able to put here. He's got his orb of venom, got himself some tangos, and uh, he's going top. All right, later. Bottle on a ward, too. Alright, Armel already taken a, a sizable slash in the mid lane, but nothing they can't deal with. We'll see if Nuts is gonna be going around here. I swear, I'm gonna call this Crystal Maiden my nuts all game. I'm just used to saying it. Anyway, there we go. Black going in onto Hana. XY joins the struggle. First Blood isn't gonna be in this lane, but let's keep watching it anyway. Axe is one hit from death. They've got Nuts there who goes in with another Frostbite. We'll find the kill. Fly Solo gonna get blocked in as well. They don't have any more lockdown as Crystal Maiden's fresh out of mana, so they can't get a double there. But kill score now one to one, as we did see uh, there was a death here in this bottom. Was it? Yeah, yeah it was Timber. Ice, ice, ice got locked down. Yeah, this is Ice uh, standing in, by the way. On our little... Or playing, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. tagged as the stand-in, though. <laughs> yeah. He is, he's very much part of the team, but just... That's that's who that is, if you were wondering. Hey, he's got to fix that, man. Ah, uh, whatever. He never has the right name, like, ever. It's like tradition at this point, honestly. So I guess we'll allow it. But uh, early on, Timbersaw, to be expected, only level 2 now. It's really not until you have at least the second point reactor where you start feeling like a good hero. And at least his lane's in a good God spot. God darn it. I'm missing oh, everything wrecked. here. That's a double raise. RML. Hmm. That is nice. Look at his HP too. That, that was just a, oh, it looks like Ember was salving. He got caught out. Ah. So Armel already having a pretty decent time in this lane. Uh, he was chunked down pretty early. I think he had to you know, sit back, relax, eat up all his regen because he is now a regenless Shadow Fiend. Has to play this one very safe. If Ember just kind of jumps at him and gets the better of the engage, it's it's all over. Well, for now, I'm sure he'll be quite happy. Life's easy. You're level four. You got 19 stacks. Look at Jabs. It's like, oh, creeps, please. Come to the tower. Let me farm you. Even Fly Solo shows up. Give him that mana burn. Oh, we thought about oh. it. He canceled it. Oh, mm. I'm looking at top lane there. An anti mage went in, blinked in front, went for the body block so Nuts could get close enough to get that frostbite. Very well played. And now Timber. Bro, you gotta play safe, dude. He's just in a very <laughs> unhappy sandwich right now. Oh, this is. Not the life. I mean, he wants to just keep whirling death and onto a Bing, but they've got another stun, and a Bing doesn't have to save mana for shit. All right, it's getting close. Who is it, is it gonna be? Got that whirling death in two seconds, but oh, yep, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm sure he got some levels, right? Yeah, he's almost level four. Not too shabby. That was pretty funny. 
totally body blocked there. Couldn't even like cut his way out with the whirling death. Yeah, I mean, you saw him dying way up near his own tower here in the lane earlier. You see him struggling and you know, hugging his own space, and then just you look down, he's cruising past the enemy tier one. All right, well, support's gone. Boot box out of mana, so in goes Ice Ice Ice. He's got that arcane aura. Just gonna start spamming. And level three now for nuts. And oh, he goes one 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 actually, so. Can't have to jungle up a little bit. There's a satyr as well. And, uh, oh, who needs jungle? We'll just head mid instead. Double smoke. Spy solo smoking here. Supports here. And this might be a dead clock. Yeah, looks like clock is going to run into it. This time, not going to be so lucky. He gets off his cogs, but he's just trapping the problem close to himself. And there he goes. That's another little kill. That's what we call a tank in the gank right there. Nice save, Fly Solo. What a player. Yeah, he eats it up so Shadow Fiend doesn't take it. Very, yep. very efficient. Got to keep those souls. 24. Mad damage. These Boombox is still just hiking his way back. You know, this is... Yeah, you die as Ice Ice Ice, but did he ever get a lost space? He got, like, almost an entire level in terms of, like, round the XP. Oh, yeah, when it's just Timber versus Wraith King, just... You can, you can destroy him pretty quickly. Just yeah. keep whirling death in him, and there's nothing really Wraith King can do. He's got a stun's worth of mana, and that's about it. So now to go the Warlock, spam heal, just keeping that Timber Saw a little bit unhealthy, keeping him staying a little bit farther back, buying some more space for the Wraith King to to get in there, get nasty. In terms of last hits, our big leader is going to be the Shadow Fiend, of course, because he got such a lovely start in lane, got a kill, he's got a lot of space, ain't no one taking up his territory. I like this tube and box. He gets a stack off down here. He gets some raindrops for himself so we can keep spamming out that shadow word. And uh, they're going to bring down Fly Solo. Now they don't know XY is here, so if they dive too deep, there could be a turnaround. XY is going to have to get his body in the fight pretty soon. He's going to roll forward onto Boombex. Timber Chain out from our Timber Saw, but there's still three very angry heroes after the dire side. They go in for another stun. The Timber Saw pulls through, but XY will still end up eating it. That's a killing spree for the Warlock. Now they get the Wraith King down. That's going to be, all in all, not a bad trade here. They just can't lose Ice 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 for this. He goes in. He's eating mangoes. This kid's ready to party. That yeah, looks like he'll be okay along with Boombox. So uh, definitely worth for Faceless. I mean, kill the Wraith King. Trade your Earth Spirit. Totally fine with that. Gold's going to your Timber Saw. Absolutely. This poor Wraith King is he's having a tough time. Once he gets his ulti, we'll see it a little bit better. But mana is still going to be a problem for him. Yeah, mana's always going to be a, a very sad story for Bay. <laughs> Speaking of mana, let's go check out our uh, anti-mage up in the top lane. Having a pretty successful time. 38 last hits for himself. Oh, back down bottom. We don't get a break, do we? Timbersaw just eating it once again. This time surrounded by three. That's going to be a nice little chakra. Fly solo. Could be in some trouble. That's going to be Timbersaw getting that with a kill. Does he try to go against the Wraith King here? There's no mana for a what whirling a death. There's one magic stick charge, but... No, he's just going to go heal himself up. They bring in Nuts, so they got the reinitiation if they need it on the Crystal Maiden. Yeah, I like that too. Nuts just holding, just in case they turn back with the, the Wraith King. And wow, fully regen now. Never saw Dota. Shrine left for the mana too. Oh man, that's that's efficiency right there. That's, that's Dota too. Up in this top, top lane. lane. Deep Ooh. dive there. Black able to blink himself into the trees. Axe just sitting there, content cutting the wave. Battle Hunger, not available, but Call being threatened uh, XY, maybe? I think XY might take one for oh, the team. Wow. Look at that! Uh, that, that was, was fancy watching. enough to worth missing a kill. Yeah, that, that actually was. That was pretty sick. Uh, but bottom, yeah, it's Wraith King again. I mean, if they're going to just camp nuts down here, what can you do? This is a level 7 Timber Saw. Wraith King is level 5. Even if he had ulti, it's not really going to change anything. Typical Ice 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 Dota, that's what we're used to. Armel in the mid does have a DD though. Oh, we're gonna see that come to fruition there. It's Armel, he's ready just to dumpster on everyone. The brief stun buys a little bit of time, but not able to go finish off XY. He's just chilling there. He's having a fun time. One raise will take him out. But again, you're content to trade your Earth Spirit for a kill on the <laughs> Did mid Did you lane. see those pings? I saw some very <laughs> upset pings. Everyone's mid. <laughs> that's what that was. That's, where's your missing calls, idiots? Push on their lanes. Hurry. <laughs> Well, they're going to push out something here as Black makes his way into the top lane, but he's going against an axe. That's a very aggressive, bold move there. He can kind of hop himself away, but he's super low health. And they're going to keep trying to bully this clockwork down, but he can cut his way through the trees. Oh, they get back on top of the axe. The axe has no more mana. Black is solo, but they bring in Jabs, who actually brings the damage. 
And it will be a killing spree for Nuts as he pops that little Crystal Nova to get the burst damage necessary. Down in the bottom lane, no break from the action. So we got Ice 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 just sitting back eating oodles of damage, but he'll be okay. He's a Timber Saw. Yeah, it looks like the top is simmered down as well. What about Boombox? He's level five and a half, so closing in on the golems. Might be able to make a rotation at that point. Fly Solo, the other important one, unfortunately not even level four yet. Uh, one of the more difficult aspects of this support clock, you really need either a bunch of kills or like every bounty room are they, are on this hero. This? Can they do this? Nah, they can't. They just want to protect their stack. Get Wraith King all that juicy solo farm he deserves. Not quite able to get oh, that pull man. off either, but... Haste Rune, Shadow Fiend with a full bottle, just charging down. Let's see if he can chug against this Timber Saw. He's going this in, man. This is risky. And they do have the Earth Spirit. Gonna drop a boulder, and that's gonna be enough for Armel to back off, so... Some, uh, some attempts coming out. I think when you see a Haste Rune, you just gotta go for it. Your brain's gotta switch to that bloodthirsty mode. Yeah, it's a good thing he didn't go too crazy, though, with XY being nearby. And finds himself on those bounties, and Fly Solo gets a little bit of breathing room here mid too, so very important for this guy, so he can actually start contributing. Try and be that uh, pseudo blink dagger for Raffi and oh, the Axe. Basically. Here we go, jumping in. Everyone's kind of missing their stuns. And there's the rock. Boombax going in, manages to get the heal off of himself. Ah Bing gonna be chasing down XY. Meanwhile, down here, oh, we're the gonna be reinitiating onto the Timber Saw, but he gets stuck. Fly Solo solo! Oh! Timbersaw able to take him out before he goes down. Wraith King gonna be gobbling up those magic warrant charges, living through that Crystal Nova put out by Nuts, but that was still a nice little play there by Ice Ice Ice. At least getting something for himself if he's going down. He's taking someone with him. RML just trying to bail, but that's not going so well for him. I really like how free Black feels to just rotate like that. Like, they just, Searing Chains uh, is just before it starts, Black is already TPing, you know? They're just like, look, I can kill this SF, just TP mid Black. He's like, okay, thanks for the gold. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's how this team works. They're all just, they'll, they'll try something creative just because they know it's going to work. They have faith in each other. Definitely a good dynamic going on here. Comforting rune of Either way, looking at little net worths here. Shadow Fiend going to be still on the top of the chart, but with those two deaths in the time out of lane, it's going to be pretty difficult for him to maintain that lead unless he just... You know, he puts his nose to the grindstone and gets back to farming. Yeah, and now we're at uh, dream time for Jabs here. Level 10, gets the talent, gets the veil. Time to go. He's in the uh, the fighting mode. No bots for this guy early on. Wants to actually find some engagements. And uh, it's good timing too. Rappy, 800 gold away from the Blink Dagger. They're not ready to be aggressive yet on the Radiant side. Unless they're going to do it through Fly Solo, which is a possibility. Uh, maybe one of the golems are back up if they want to make some sort of a rotation. But other than that, you kind of want to see uh, maybe your Ember Spirit teaming up down bottom or something like that. XY getting lost space top here too. Yep, down bottom, Timber saw once again, trying his luck. But at this point, when everyone's got some levels, Timber versus Wraith King is not going to be a riveting battle of the death. It's just going to be two big guys slugging away at each other. But this kind of gank can definitely change things up. Three heroes moving down, smoked up. They got the rotation. More radiant heroes coming forward, oh, but the hook, Timbersaw, he's, he's just doing God's work here. He's setting it up. There's the boulder coming in. Looks like Timbersaw is still getting low, but they got the magnetized rock and they take out Wraith King's first light. The fatal bonds may still be enough to take out the Timbersaw. He's gonna oh, cancel his TP. He wants to go back in for this. He's in kamikaze mode, man. He's getting in there at whatever cost. Fly Solo will be going down inside his own cogs. There's a TP out of the Wraith King. After his reincarnation was burned, he just wanted to bail. So, overall, successful gank from Faceless, and Timbersaw lived the entire time. Damn. That's intense. It's great timing by Faceless, too. Uh, likely still knowing that the golems are down and not quite back up. Good time to make that pressure down into the Radiant safe lane. That's what we always expect from the Dire. Uh, it usually starts around 9 minutes depending on certain cores or a little bit later you have an AM in the safe lane so he's not making that rotation and that delays it a little bit in this case to like 12. But uh, they'll try and knock down this tower. They take over this part of the map. We get some wards going and try and limit where Armel will be able to farm. He does have his Shadow Blade now though so that's going to sync up pretty nicely with Rappy. He's about to pick up his Blink Dagger and with that Golems there's a chance they could Honestly, just like five-man white bases if they find the right fight now. Uh, very big spike coming up for them. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting heated here. Again, looking at overall net worth, it is still a really close game. I think it's going to come down to how much work can the Shadow Fiend do? Is he going to sit back and farm for the next couple of minutes, or is he going to get really active with his team? And I think, like you mentioned, it's going to come down to where the next Warlock ult happens. Also, just a brief uh, apology for my shit camera work. I'm on a new setup, and it's 3 in the morning, so you kind of get what you get. <laughs> It'll get better, I promise. I'm working at the kinks. There we go. We are back into it. There is sufficient charcoal in the computers, and we are ready to go. All right, excellent. Double that on in. <laughs> Tower. I'll never... Un if someone could understand what they mean by... Is, are they, like, grilling? Do they got a heater that's, like, powered by charcoal? I just don't get it. It's one of those, like, if you feel like sick things, you can, like, put a little bit of charcoal and stuff. Oh. Yeah. Oh, like, like the Edie kind of charcoal. Okay. But I prefer the other thoughts. Yeah, I didn't know, know if they were dire. like doing really detailed charcoal sketches of the draft and the game plan or something, but... Oh, there's another way to go. Yeah, yeah. maybe that's what it is. Yeah, they ran out. That makes sense. Uh, run down to the shop, the old artsy store. Rappy Tower, Blink Dagger, let's go! <laughs> Look how rich he is that tower. Oh, Timbersaw's oh. in, he's ready to go. Uh, Timbersaw, that's an ambitious play right there, sir. Uh, he's gonna go know. take Jabs a Wraith Fire Blast. I mean, Jabs is here. If Jabs can get a triple here, that's worth, but... I don't think that's going the way that Jabs oh, wants one. to. Get him! Got him! Oh, Got him! Oh, did you see that, dude? <laughs> that kid's fucking dead. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was so worth the golem. That was like 100% worth. That's actually so good. Oh. Dang. That was pretty awesome. I, that is just right there as a, as a check plus. Check plus. Well, either way, that is looking real good for Clutch Gamers. They go in and they take out two of the highest uh, value heroes on the side of Faceless. Timbersaw coming back in. Maybe Radiant are going to have to back off a little bit. They got the roll in coming from XY. They managed to get that little stun going. But the Warlock heal is still on this Wraith King. That is still a very ambitious kill. Crystal Maiden going to let it go, and they will find what they need. Wraith King's down, but... Two more heroes hit the deck, and it looks like Crystal Maiden's gonna fall as well. Black, one of the lone survivors, trying to get himself back, but he's gonna get stunned. The call oh. not gonna connect, as there is the blink away from Black. Very well played by the anti-mage, but unfortunately, with the rest of his team still dead, this tier one is donezo. Wow. Nicely done. Good retaliation. Killing Ice 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 just twice in a row like that is very painful for him. <laughs> it's kind of funny with how much he's been, like, kind of owning this game. It's weird to look and see that he's 6-5 and 1, but uh, yeah, I mean, with the lane he's given, it's not that shocking, it's just... I, we're talking about Ice 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 here, dude. This guy is just, when he's in, he's in, he's with it. If it's a bad choice, doesn't matter, just follow through, and you gotta respect that kind of mentality. But yeah, he's been making a lot of space for his team. I think the entire time we've been focusing on Timbersaw going in under the tier 1, Black has just been... Like this, jungling up. He's got his full treads, got a full helm of the Dominator before going on to finish up his Battle Fury. And here we go, top lane. Ah, Bing. I don't think it's looking so great for you, buddy. He goes in, there's no reincarnation available, and they give the kill to Black. So definitely a high efficiency play. He's getting the money he needs for the next component of his Battle Fury. And that means it's only about a thousand gold off from the whole thing. Yeah, that's definitely what we call the ideal scenario. Yeah, Black's just chilling, farming some camps. Oh, let me just blink for a kill. Okay, great. Back to farming some camps. This is uh, the life he loves to lead. But here we go. This is that big rotation we want. Now, there's no golems, but plenty of other options here. Uh, Crystal Maiden, I think, is going to eat this one. Just take it for the team. And everyone else walks away. I think that's, that's kind of the best of both worlds for both teams, honestly. Clutch feel like they got a successful gank, and Faceless are like, eh, it was Crystal Maiden. Yeah, it's really good for Faceless, too, because they placed that ward right on top of a sentry and observer, so the Dire know it's there. That'll get immediately dewarded. And uh, they don't get anything else out of that. Tower's already down. They've taken all the tier 1s, so they have to go a little bit deeper. But at the same time, they also didn't run into a full 5-man without golems being quite up yet, so likely still kind of happy with that if you're CG. And now they can, again, go for that big rotation. Um, might wait for Rappy on the blade mail. He's close. All right, Radiant very much making this top jungle their home. Nice aggressive ward put down by the Clockwork, so just making sure no rotations are going to be coming in without Radiant knowing about them. Meanwhile, Jabs going to take this opportunity to start poking at that tier 1 mid. Looks like there will be some TP response. Clutch don't want to let this go without a fight. They're going to bring forward Ah Bing, and there was a rotation in from the Warlock, who does have his golems available. 
So maybe looking for the old sandwich play. Crystal Maiden could be another victim. Oh god, Crystal Maiden, you poor thing. You just respawned. And she's she's just accepted death. She's going. If you come back, I'll kill you again. Alright, tanking. It's fine. I'm sure that's a-okay. I mean, there, there's only so many times Crystal Maiden can take one for the team before she's just crippled. Looks like I mean, she's look where Black is, though. Like, they're waiting for one person to rotate and then try and get a kill with XY. They're still, like, kind of baiting it here, but... Doesn't look like they're gonna come back, so... Black will just have to try and force a trade. Mm, looks like both teams are pretty okay with that. Tier 2 for Tier 2 action going on. That's Lane a dead taken out, And that, yeah, that clockwork, he had the highest of ambitions, but... Nope, not even a little. Oh, XY though. They know he's trapped in the trees. He's got that rolling boulder cooldown. Five more seconds. Is he actually going to make it out because I've been got distracted by creeps? My goodness. Well, if you get to here and you don't see him, you're like, all right, he TP'd out already. There's no way he's still in here. That guy is the ring around the rosy champion 2017. Okay. Well, they don't end up getting the tower though, so still a, little, a favorable trade for CG. <laughs> now we start eyeing towards Roche being the most important thing in the map. He's mine. And uh, it's a fairly easy take for the Radiant. It's you know they've got uh, what three levels up in presence of the Dark Lord now, level fifteen. They can uh, as long as they have their cooldown and the Golem being the most important one, then it shouldn't be too bad. You definitely, I think, want to try and get it before there's a Manta up on Black and you don't have a giant window. Yeah, he is just, the last two minutes he's been chugging away, finished up the battle theory, and of course that's making things very easy farming-wise. He's got his pet centaur just traipsing around looking for danger ahead of him. Good micro. And then, uh, yeah, working on that manta like you mentioned, he's already got pretty much enough gold for the Yasha. He's just saving up for bigger, badder things here. Back to our mid lane, we got our Ember Spirit who has his blink on top of his veil. Does he go back in for bots, or does he start with the damage items oh you would think bots for sure uh, be the most calm pick up here man he has Ooh. really been slowed down i like how they've been scouting with our mel here too and well he will reveal he, he went straight for the, sh the silver edge just to help out with the anti mage and the timber saw pretty smart i mean it's not the best against timber but obviously it's very good against am if you have any magical damage and uh it's gonna help tank him up a little bit and he'll eventually get to the bkb anyway doesn't look like there'll be too many decisive fights before then and Fort down, bot. I think they already forded on Dire though, and they did. So, let's see if they make a rotation down to try and save this or just keep pushing. And uh, looks like push is the option here. I mean, if you can open up the shrines. Yeah, that nice first high ground is so critical. And I, I mean, our faceless really just going to give this away. They go, they trade, they get the tier two bottom finally. Timbersaw able to finish that. And I guess they're feeling like there's going to be some rotations, and they are right. Three heroes, TP back. And that's going to be a defended high ground. So overall, map is pretty even globally. No one's cracked high ground yet. Some tier twos are starting to go down. The cores are getting their big items up. Anti Mage is now first on the net worth chart. Overtakes the Shadow Fiend. So things are starting to get a little bit more interesting than they were a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, and now we still again just lie and wait for Roche. Exactly when CG feel comfortable heading in there or making a big smoke play to try and. Uh, find a pick. And now, with the ward, they spot jabs. They have a blink dagger on a bing. Decent initiation. They can lead off with that. And he doesn't have a remnant down. Yep, he is uh, about to get dropped on. They go, they wait for his light of fist. Got the one remnant and scoots himself to freedom. Very well yeah, they played. The hook. Might not have been enough anyway, but perhaps it would have bought more time for Rappi to get there. Either way, everyone. Getting away safely, just making some motions around the map. I mean, you can tell clutch gamers really want to go. They want to mount a really strong push onto the high ground. They've got warlock golems at the ready. The problem is just making sure you got eyes on all of Faceless to make sure they're not waiting in the trees to jump you. They really need these bots on jabs. Once that happens, jabs can like swap with ice, 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 and like jabs can be the one down here He's doing this kind of shenanigans. Astonishingly close. Yeah, um, and it's such a big deal for them because then you have this timber saw who can like actually be in the fights and starting things off and not even committing to stuff. Whereas uh, your Ember kind of has to commit when he dives into a fight like that. All right, we're, we're just sending him in alone. Yep, there's no way this could go wrong. Oh look, Roche is winning. Dude, 
Roche is actually owning. Roche is a strong boy. <laughs> All right, he needs a little help. Yeah, there we go. Bringing in our Mel. Got a little damage rocket. We didn't talk about the full BK. Oh my god, you see those crits though? Mm. Yeah, get it, boy. Four points and mortal strike. Oh, the centaur! All right. Oh god. They killed it. Warlock nice. Midas the centaur. He just got wrecked. Poor buddy. And XY, thank you. There we go. They move forward. They want to go into Axe. A little too late to snap the Aegis up. And Radiant, they're looking strong. They lose their Shadow Fiend, or rather, they lose their Axe. The Shadow Fiend's able to channel up the Requiem, but all the dire, they make it safely to the trees. Oh, the flare! Oh, it went over. Ah, <laughs> uh, Bing, yep. he's going in for yep. more here. He's got to be careful. This guy does not have the Aegis, and he's going to get focused on by the Anti Mage. They do get the kill onto the Wraith King. Armel! Oh! They pop the Aegis as soon as the Shrine is activated. They've still got this uh, wad of heroes moving forward. Warlock doing his best, but at this point, he's just sitting still. They want to go for the Shadow Fiend. There's the big kill that they need, and Jabs continues to pressure forward. And he's got pretty much nothing else to go on here. He uses up his Blink. They've got to get some sort of catch, and there's Black blinking in with the body blocks. It's a full team wipe in favor of Faceless. Very well done, Dire. They don't get the Roche. They don't get the Aegis, but they get all the kills they could possibly want. That would be an example of, I mean, I don't know, support Clockwork, like, if you have your Force Staff and stuff as a Clockwork in those scenarios, you can make so many more plays around the Roche Pit, but Clock just has, like, that one chance for his to initiate, try and win the fight with nothing but Tranquil Boots and an Urn, and you're, like, walking with this Battery Salt, and they jump the Axe, too, so... The, the fact that Rappy's the first one to die just makes that fight so much more difficult. Uh, it was so spread out that they didn't have a good area to place down the golems and make it really effective, so you don't see it until this whole shrine scenario and the fight's already over at that point. Anyways, oh, that's, that's got to be so heartbreaking. You make it up to the high ground, you see sweet freedom there in the shrine, and you die right as it starts. But again, he came back and well, had a few sweet moments of freedom before he was killed again. Uh, well, now... BKB, nine seconds for Armel. And uh, Aegis gone. I believe they... Yeah, they got the gold and everything too, so... I mean, at least there's that, but... Tis mine. Definitely a good run back for Faceless. We have those... Desperately need items, and nope. Yeah. Let's see if they left anything in the pit, perhaps, but... I thought no they were looking for Roche. Spotted. I'm like, you're, you're a little soon. Alright. There we go. Uh, Bing maybe caught out here. The warding from the Radiant is mostly aggressive, and they've got nothing defensive. And unfortunately, it's going to mean that this is going to happen a whole lot. He does have his reincarnation, if he can uh, save up the mana here. And uh, he's, he's just taking it like a champ. And there's the TP in from Hana to the Shrine. They want to go finish off this Crystal Maiden. Boombax is there just to rake it in. But there's the rest of the cores coming in. It was a great bait all along. And they've got this Wraith King down. They take out the Axe as well. Hell yeah, you'll trade a Crystal Maiden for that. Yeah, CG have definitely lost their moment where they get to pick the fights. Uh, with the bots being up uh, on uh, Jabs, just makes it so much easier. Black has that Manta. He absolutely destroys. His damage just increases immensely. And all our Mel can really do is either be there when the fight starts, or he's just split pushing the whole time. And now they're wrapping. They have a gem on XY, too. Nice. They're trying to go in, but... I don't, I don't think he's too spooked by this. He goes in, he's BKB, and he's going to get off his Requiem and his Death Requiem, which will end up taking out Jabs, but that's uh, he doesn't get experience for that kill. He was already dead. Meanwhile, that was pretty sick actually even got one. Focus down by Ice Ice Ice. This guy is getting real aggressive. We're behind Tier 3s here. We're high ground. Shrine activated. Blink in from Abbing. I think Timbersaw may have flown a little too close to the sun here. He's, uh, he's getting low, but does manage to make the chain all the way up onto the cliff. But there's the hook shot. Oh, beautiful play by Fly Solo. Just keeping eyes on him, keeping on top of him. But do they actually have the distance to get this guy down? No, Timbersaw just kiting away. And a regen rune to boot. 20 bloodstone charges. That's fair. Regen rune. Oh, okay. CM aura. Haha. <laughs> this guy is just made of mana. You puncture oh, him and his so mana rich. flows out instead of blood. That is That is absurd. And looks like he's got the recipe for the Boots of Travel as well. He's going into the Shiva's Guard, and this guy will not be killable in about five minutes. Yeah, it's actually such a good Shiva's Guard game, too. Axe, SF, and Wraith King. Like, damn. That is pretty sick. Well, Radiant, uh, they really only have one option. It's like, walk is five, try and maybe knock down that last tower. Wait till the next Roche, but they don't have the 
best catch. Um, I mean, I guess you, you can call it catch because they have this uh, axe and clockwork, but proper positioning around the map that we've been seeing from Jabs and Black, they're, they've like not even coming close to these guys. Like their movements seem so predicted by Faceless. Especially when you have a Clockwork and a, a Wraith King just farming under wards. Okay, how does Wraith King get off the struggle bus here? Because he's had himself an armlet and a blink and boots for a really long time, and he's making progress towards the BKB, but you look at the net worth and he's still riding below half in terms of uh, you know, what, he, what he's bringing to the party, whereas Anti-Mage is getting a little bit out of control. I mean, is Wraith King just trying to make this up by taking the game way long because it feels like that's that's not how you win against a anti-mage he's content with that he'll fight you late game all day long yeah he's just i don't know he's a wraith king at this point most of your damage comes from your shadow fiends he's like basically just a core uh, a carry that can at least control and oh rappy nice banta dodge damn Oh, well, yeah, Black we're getting here. We're TPing to the shrines. Initiation from Fly Solo goes in, hops into the cogs, and Anti Mage could be in some trouble. Tries to blink away. The rock is dropped, but Black does make it down to the low ground eventually. There's a blink on the axe to try to chase him, but looks like everyone's going to go back to where they were now, and that's pretty major for Clutch Gamers. They invested a Warlock Golem for that and got nothing in return. Meanwhile, down bottom, there's uh, some push onto the tier threes. A couple strikes onto the Emperor Spirit, but he's feeling fine. And that means no golems left to defend this if Faceless really do want to make a push. Yeah, they're just not on any sort of a timer either. As you said, not exactly fun to head to much later. I mean, sure, there's the 60 minute scenarios where things start to even out a little bit more here uh, between our lineups. But overall, you're pretty happy splitting the map, ratting, farming as much as you can on the side of Faceless, getting that next tier of items, Black eyeing a heart for himself. There we go. Uh, TP's in. Yeah, Hana just just trying his best. Gets off a really nice call with the blade mail, but has to BKB just to walk around, and that's a, a big BKB charge use. That was his first one. Full 10 seconder. So oh, seems at least like he lives. Right now, Faceless are super good at baiting out really high value things uh, from Clutch Gamers. First the Golems, then the BKB, and they're not getting anything out of it right now. Oh, box. Rest in peace. Yeah, I, he is he is not feeling good. <laughs> and that's going to be another tier 2 tower, and this is what Clutch Gaming was so scared of. They've now got no golems to defend this, they've got no BKB on the axe, and Ice 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 is just chewing you apart behind the racks. Armel, he's got the Requiem, he's got the BKB, he's going to be his team's big chance of having a successful fight here. He's going to try that Requiem, but it's barely focusing down the anti-mage. There we go, they got the lock. Very nice stun. Will get a six streak onto Armel. There's the money he needs. Is this working out? Jabs going to town onto the axe. Meanwhile, there is going to be uh, Timbersaw finally taken out Armel. He, I mean, he's looking good. They go in with another Wraithfire Blast to reinitiate here, and the Ember Spirit's dead <laughs> as well. It's a two for three so far, but definitely favoring Clutch Gamers. Armel Boy. somehow brought the damage to that fight. I thought it was too ambitious, but he done it. That was pretty funny. That was definitely just a little bit too crazy. Not much else to say about oh, that, but... Fight uh, of the supports. And there's nothing you can do against TP unless you're willing to drop golems. And even if you had the golems, that's not quite a worthy investment. Well... That was something. Uh, Ice Ice is already back down. Uh, he's just... This guy is full go, go, go. Nuts trying to do what he can to defend this... Uh, mid but armel is just starting to go with the right clicky clicky xy goes forward blinks out of danger just in time now this guy's holding a gem as well crystal maiden will be focused down she goes into her ghost scepter form but they've got plenty of magic damage to take her out and spirit has to be so careful not to lose this gem it's so valuable with all the wards go for the rats do and it do it they're doing it uh, yes sir they are Timbersaw's coming back though, they got this Wraith King, one of the racks has fallen, they get the Wraith King's first life, there's a TP in from the Anti-Mage, now Black is ready to rumble, but smoke away, they're just going to clean up the remnants of their lane, and that is going to be half a lane of super creeps in favor of the Radiant, and the shrines are vulnerable now as well on the dire side of the map. Well, mistakes were made. <laughs> The, uh, I don't know, there was a lot of weird stuff that happened in that fight on the rating high ground. Jabs? Jabs? What? Oh, he is Whoa. playing a dangerous game. Black as well, so close to an area that they know is dangerous. Are they actually going in for this? 
roll forward and they've got the golems to drop this is black potentially in some serious trouble he's gonna get stunned by the wraith fire blast he blinks himself away they could not afford to his anti-mage there ice 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 dives into all of them because this guy is not scared of anything that's gonna go with him the frost fight they sure would love to get the clockwork killed they do but it will cost them their crystal maiden tp out from rml can they break it yeah they can they got that kill and roll forward initiation onto the axe again even through the blade mail they easily cut him down. The only survivor is the Wraith King just walking around his jungle mourning his former teammates because that was a murder. Yeah, recovery mode. <laughs> yeah. That is, that's faceless. Back. They say, all right, fucked up a little bit. Non-efficiency. Lost a Rax. Let's get right back in this and take a Rax of our own. Yeah, that's pretty much almost the exact same uh, net worth swing and stuff. So at least they do have buybacks right now on the rating side. We still have ulti from a Bing. Might consider buying back on RML. They're definitely going to lose the tier 3, though, so shrines will go down. There's no way Black doesn't stay for this. Uh, there we go. Got him. And, yep, yeah, safe retreat as Ice 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 is going to be drawn some attention into the top lane, but able to blink himself out. So shrines vulnerable on both sides of the map. We are soon going to see a, a shrineless Dota 2 map. And that means the Roche control is going to be a little bit tricky for both sides. But speaking of Roche, Faceless hopped themselves right in the pit. Clockwork does scout that out with the Rocket Flare. So Radiant know exactly what's up, and I don't think Dyer can take this quick enough, so they bail out of the pit. Wow, nice flare by Fly Solo. Just to confirm their suspicions. And uh, there is a ward from the Dyer on the Shrine, so they would have spotted the SF rotation. They might try and camp something here, try and make some sort of a play. Radiant Vision, they see up here. They don't see XY quite where he is, but now they will. Dyer should know they're here, judging by that flare. Everything should be fine. Butterfly now done here. That's actually pretty huge. No um, MKB for a while on black. An AM? Is he flapping it into himself? Oh no, like just the, the butterfly onto our, uh, our Mel. Ah. Yeah, just not gonna have MKB for a while. On the opponents. They were talking about anti-mage, and I'm like, I, I think that's an abyssal. He does have an <laughs> abyssal. Interesting talking point. That's going to be fun in these team fights because it feels like faceless. They've already got a decent amount of lockdown there, zip zapping in and out of these fights, and now anti-mage can just completely Aegis. focus someone down. Speaking of focusing down, Roche hits the deck once again, and that's going to be an Aegis on our anti-mage. I love DDs at Roche timings, hey? Yes, this Great stuff, honestly. Anti-Mage just slapping at you for like 300 a pop. Now, Radiant, they don't seem too happy with this. They're going to go forward. Black uses the Manta. Dude, these Manta dodges are oh, actually insane. Oh, my goodness. Now, it looks like our Timbersaw could be in a little bit of trouble, but again, he's still got 18 Bloodstone charges. They bring Black back in. Easy kill onto Boombex and Ah Bang just circling around. They burn down his mana before the reincarnate hits. So he's just he's just super dead. Now they're going in. They'd like clockwork as well. He's gonna go shoot himself up to the high ground, but it's only buying a little bit of time call from the axe, but fuels off just takes care of that real quick. Hana just having to fight underneath his oh, own tier fours a... as the rest of his team goes to work on the top racks. Black just getting a chance to focus everything he wants down. Ice 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 is going to poke onto the mid lane now. This is ambitious here. Link forward from the axe. They have the Shadow Fiend. That's the damage they need to turn this fight. Fly Solo gets low, but able to walk himself back to Shrine. Black still hot on his heels under the Shrine. Still wants to fight, but Black may have to go ahead and blink right on out of here. He does not want to lose the Aegis for nothing. Well, they lose their melee racks, so we're even Stevens in terms of the racks count. And uh, where are we in net worth? I feel like, yeah, faces have a huge advantage. Oh, 15k at this point. That makes sense. I mean, with an AM and a Timber and an Emperor, just like three yeah. heroes are so good at farming across the map. I tell you, Earth Spirit is just such a hero. He lets you do whatever the hell you want with your other three cores. This guy's so ridiculous. He is an initiator. He can, like, do all that shit. You don't need initiators when you have this guy. And then you, you just get these insane high damage heroes like Timber Saw. And, uh, you know, a semblance of control out of your Ember Spear, but he's not a full player. Alright, XY. He's a damage guy. Solid roll, buddy. Made it all the way up there. Anyway, uh, we yeah. do have Earth Spirit working on the Ags, so our Earth Spirit's about to get even spicier. What a hero. Yeah. And uh, speaking of heroes, Black, top of the net worth, is just 
just still going at it. I mean, what does the anti-mage have left to buy? He's still chilling with the helm in his backpack. He's got Abyssal. He's got all his nonsense once Aegis runs out. I mean, does he go MKB or do you just kind of not care? Well, he went for a butterfly of his own. Yeah. He, he's been eyeing that heart for so long. I wasn't sure if he was actually going to do it, but uh, changed his mind. Probably the right call here. Definitely do not. Once the Chrysalis is up on the... Uh, Battle Fiend too, it just makes it so much better. He might go back for a Bloodthorn though if he sees this butterfly. He might as well at this point. Like if you see this uh evasion on black. He needs something to deal with it and already having the chrysalis it'll probably make more sense to have Bloodthorn. Yeah, it's all about just the chaos of the fights and making sure you actually get it off on the right target, either way. Shrine taken down on the bottom side of the map, that means Radiant ain't got more shrines. They're done, man. Now they can just sit on their base. Uh, we still have the issues of, you know, Axe, decent high ground defender. The chains from Warlock can always just win you a fight, even at this point. We have double golem action. But the rat is real from the side of Faceless. I mean, they don't want to make the same mistake they made the first time they came high ground. They, they needlessly went too deep, didn't pressure all three lanes at once like they could have. And uh, they got majorly caught out. Now, it could have been because they were trying to force this 5v5 fight because they don't want someone getting picked off by Clock and Axe on, like, a second lane. Which makes sense, and I can understand that, but they just gotta make sure they don't dive too crazy deep this time like they did prior. I have the hiccups. The hiccups? I, oh my goodness. It's, oh. it's not great. Man, I hate the hiccups, honestly. Is you Ember's know, supposed I... to look dirty? Is that just Ember, Ember his... Earth or Ember? Ember. He just yeah, looks this like is he's like in a cloud sick. of dirt. It's the Eternal Envy set, man. This is uh, he's in the desert. Yeah, I, I've seen the set before. It just usually looks more like goldeny instead of just dirt. All right, I guess I'm in the wrong. The desert beauty. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. I like the set. I like the it set. It makes me want to play a hero. Oh, that here I don't we play. go. We got initiation. RML chunk to half, but not gonna be able to find his fancy requiems here. Meanwhile, nice, nice, nice. He's he's tanking it for the team. Are we gonna actually see any uh any help? He's just making it to the trees, and then he dies. No deny. But making space. Look at that. Rax whittled down to half health. Anti-Mage goes in, and can they actually take a fight here? Warlock's still holding onto the Golem. Shadow Fiend's still holding onto the Requiem. There's so much damage in the Radiant. The Dire just have to back out and keep farming up and try again. I like that the Radiant invested in the gem, too. Despite being down quite a bit, it can be very difficult to uh, get into that as a support. But uh, making sure there's nothing on this high ground. Might even find this ward in a second here. If he ventures outside the base. And he's almost into the Aghanims. He's not that he's far not. away. I think you would hold buyback, though, if you're this clockwork. I don't think you're one of those position fours that can afford to throw it away. Well, actually, if you've Aghanim stepped her, that's, that's actually totally worth it. I take it back. Oh, I'm gonna do a public service announcement. Were you? Did you have your camera on Fly Solo right there, where he just killed that ward? I did. Okay. If you guys are playing your pubs, please remember if you're a melee support, you can do that. You can you can hit high grounds now. Yep. Too many times. He's got playing on the other side of the map. Yeah, and someone's like, "Oh, I need range support. Please come." I'm like, "Dude, can you just like click it? Can you just, just try? Let you click it. Just like yeah. try a little bit. Just please. Also, have you ever used that whole courier deliver items menu thing? Like where you can send it to the person before you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, dude, I'm, easy mode. I'm so guilty of not getting used to that one yet. That's my confession. I I still, like, immediately start typing recro. I do, too, but mostly because I'm just real lazy. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, sometimes if I, if I actively steal the courier from someone that was definitely using it, I'll, I'll send it back to them. But if someone like, There was just... way too much cool shit in that patch for me to see that and fully commit to it, you know? Like, that should have been, like, oh, a slightly after patch. I mean, there were talents. I didn't have time to look at the courier menu. Dude, talents, shrines, what the hell is a backpack? My inventory's <laughs> bigger. The HUD looks different. Hold me. I'm scared. Like, there were so many changes. But I... Yeah, that is one that gets... Under value there, if you uh, right-click this bad daddy, you can send it back to the person that had it before you if you took it. PSA, in case you didn't know the old Dota tip. This is good. This is one of these games where we need these things. You know, this is, uh, because right now, I mean, this is what the Radiant have to do, and this is what the Dire have to do, so. All their movements are understood. You know what's happening. One more minute till Roche. Faceless choosing not to make the same mistake again here. Oh, I got it. There's the vision. Clockworks D-Ward means nothing now, huh? 
Oh, I need, you know what I uh I've been looking at that old HUD a couple times now and I gotta say it looks what, what were we it looks awful. Guys. I was I know. Some people are like get mad when you say that, but you look back and you're like, holy shit. Like skills were so huge. Like what is wrong with us? We look like a bunch of old people that we need our skills to be <laughs> so big. They're like four times the size it feels like compared to these ones. And now I look and I'm like, all right, this is like totally fine. Like I don't need skills that are that huge. Yeah, this is the more important part. Like we now got like some green open space between the mini map and the HUD and then the HUD and the quick buy. Like that used to just be filled in. Like we just took up more of the screen for absolute nothingness. Yeah, it was pretty bad. But that, you know, this, I like I can I, was, I definitely like feel nostalgic looking at it, but my god, I actually can't believe how big the skills were. They were huge. <laughs> They're like the size of like the new face portraits, basically. They were, it's just so much. And heroes with like 15 icons, like you get a Rubik with two shits to steal. That is, that's just your whole screen. But yeah, I was, I was firmly in the faction that despised the new HUD, thought it was offensive that Valve would try to oh, change we, it. We've left the base, Annie. I, we're out. I'm looking, there's nothing going on. We're smoked. We're still hunting. There we go. Roshan goes down. She's on the ground. Picked up. H just goes God, the way of black. In. And they're just going forward there. That's an abyssal onto Boobex, but he gets off the ult before he goes down. Is it going to be enough? Armel, he's BKB. He drops the Requiem. Do they have the damage to kill the anti-mage? They're still hunting. Crystal Maiden goes. She drops her ult, but she's still running. I don't think she gets away from this. That's going to be a culling blade right to the face. Radiant, they're still chasing down. Ah, Bing running with the last life he's got. He picks up the gem and then immediately has to pop his reincarnation. Meanwhile, Axe, Yule's up in the air. Let's we'll see if this is going to be enough to just clean wipe the dire. Ice, Ice, Ice gets so low, but he's got so much mobility now. Looks like everyone else will escape, so Anti-Mage still holds on to the H's throughout that entire fight, manages to blink to safety. Wow, great stuff by Rappy to catch out that Ember. Yeah. Right off the bat, like, didn't even have a chance to pop the cheese. Completely chain stunned down, and so important that you find that exact hero, right? You gotta get the guy who did not get the Aegis, their super important core, and just go for the win. So very well done. Uh, fight is saved, game is saved for now. And yeah, as you said though, unfortunately they were so close to getting black on that high ground. Like, unbelievably close to him going down. He got cogs pushed and he was so low, but he just blinked away in time to save that Aegis. Uh, ice, ice, ice. Ice, ice, ice. I mean, there is gonna be XY there, but looks like everyone's just trying to bail out. Fly solo now, looks like an appetizing kill. Already focused down to half health, but Armel is here. This is dangerous, the BKB is ready. Black pops into the Manta, but he's still stunned up. Nuts doing what he can, but oh gosh, Black. He blinks himself Oof. away. He's barely alive right now. Looks like he wants to go back into the fight. Does have the Aegis, remember? And they will find the kill that they need. Uh, Bing gets down low as well. He's going to go ahead, get reincarnated once again. The rest of the Dire, they're so low, but they're still together. Crystal Maiden's ulting. Looks like Antimage's Aegis will be popped, but gems are on the deck, and Ah Bing. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's super dead. Oh, they so. cut the trees. The timber couldn't get that. It was kind of funny, but... Yeah. Right. <sighs> Dire team going back to recharge, at least the ones that need to recharge. But Black is content just to start working on the rack. Still has that Manta if he needs to bring a little more manpower in, but of course wants Dude, to save risky for gamer. the sick Manta dodges. Got to be a little, at least a little bit worried about this SF possibly showing up in Viz like that, but they do get the melees and they head mid. <laughs> Moving in, Ice 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 goes, eats up some spells, but Black is still going to town, drops the Abyssal, and they need this kill. They will find the kill. GG, well played, comes out. There's no buyback from that Shadow Fiend. It's just, there's no more damage left in it. Faceless take game one after a 45 minute back and forth struggle. A Radiant were the first ones to break the high ground, but in the end, Faceless just bring it home. What a well executed game. Yeah, it was pretty much, once they missed that first Roche uh, that we had the fight at, it was a very difficult game for CG. They lost all that momentum they were pushing with, trying to get this whole group up uh, aspect, take a Rax, and, and then force the split push from Faceless, where, like, you can still pressure into lanes because they're, like, struggling to keep up with super creeps, but that never happened. Uh, they only got the, I mean, I mean, yes, Faceless got the Aegis, then dove a little bit too hard, and they did get one melee Rax, but it didn't matter. Uh, from there, CG could just not control the map at all against three blinking and botsing heroes on the side of Faceless, so 
well executed split push. Earth Spirit's a hero that lets you pick whatever the hell you want in your three cores. Um, and uh, I guess a black animage, right? Doesn't get much more, more classic than that. Absolutely not. But remember, this is a best of three series, still potentially two games where anything can happen. So that's going to do it for game number one. But you got to stick around for more Mr. Cat action coming up right after the break. See you soon. <laughs> 